So, you really never come here? I, I haven't been here. Well, you picked a good time, just not crowded like it usually gets. Like, people are dancing, selling like mango slices right around this area. And we're here somewhere very, very special. Cone oh. Island Sideshow and Freak Bar. Ready? Check it out. But, but, I, hope you true, but I hope you don't have a full bladder no, because it's no public restroom. Yeah. It's fine. Well, I'm sorry. No, I mean, no, I'm you. a gentleman. Oh, Come please. on, babe. Inside awaits a family fun show that every guidebook will tell you is the one thing you must do whenever you visit Coney Island because it's the show that made Coney Island famous. Inside, you guys are going to see every single one of the Dusty Fine Acts you see displayed above and behind me. As you can see, these are real people. The lovely lady joining me right now is none other than Zoe Zigfeld and her co-star Dionysus, an albino python. And on the inside, these two are going to do a dance of death together that will send chills up your spine and put a smile on your face. Uh, you mentioned this is your dream job, right? So I guess that, that leads to so many other questions. So one... How, how did it become your dream job? How did you realize you wanted to work with snakes? Then how did you realize that, hey, I kind of want to monetize this. And I, I like snakes. I want to work with them. I want to do this at Coney Island. That's like a three-stage thing. How did you get there? Um, so I got my first pet snake for my eighth birthday. It was a gift from my parents. He passed away a year ago. What kind of snake? Um, an albino corn snake. We had 20 good years together. Yeah, here's my baby. A friend of mine, Scary Ben, who is a burlesque performer, producer, um, and is also an artist in residence here at Coney, um, he mentioned to me about a year and a half ago that they might be looking for another snake charmer, and I was like, I didn't realize that was my dream job until you said it out loud, and now it's the only thing I want to do. Um, and so I spent a year and a half uh, working with a really wonderful team of people to like cultivate the uh, space for myself here. So what do you do at the freak show? Oh um, my, I do a lot of different things. I've been, I've been doing this I'm for a long time. It's sideshow, it's sideshow technically. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, it's, it is, I mean, well, when we have natural borns, then it's more of like the freak aspect, or if okay. we have people who all tattooed or pierced up, or, you know, do like uh, piercing suspensions, or, or um, who have modifications, because there's a, there's, a, there's a few different types of uh, sideshow performers. There's like the people like myself who have learned an act, uh, who have learned sword swallowing or fire eating or a bucket. And then there's people who have modified themselves uh, to different, you know, uh, have you seen like the cat man? You ever see the cat man? No, no. You ever seen the lizard man? No. no check it out. Well, check it out. Okay. Uh, go to, go to, go to Ripley's. Go to Ripley's. Go to Ripley's and check it out. We learn through training how not to hurt ourselves in the process. If some people ask me, like, after I do a routine, we're like, human blockhead, where I hammer a nail into my nose and do all sorts of weird stuff. People ask me, like, does that hurt? And I always say, well, not anymore. All right, so putting something in your nose. Kids, don't do this at home. Not scared? Uh, no, because I had to prepare myself beforehand. You know, I had to, like, you have to think about it. You can't just jump into it. It's not, it's not the kind of thing you just, like, leap into and then suddenly you're able to do it, you know? I mean, I mean there you go. I mean, it's uncomfortable, but that's what makes you, it gives you, now I have goosebumps. Well, I do, because I just don't like people hurting themselves, but at the same time, I'm fascinated. Yeah. And people don't realize this stuff is real. Like oh, yeah. when the person, like you swallowed, I just saw the show, and you you took a sword. Like, uh, real. These... Teach me the way, Obi Wan. <laughs> um, but yeah. Well, we, we like do right we do we do teach though. We have a sideshow school here. Actually, we do it once a year. Um, it's a specialty course where you learn a lot of the sideshow acts and skills and the proper way to do things, the wrong way to do things, uh, presentation, performance pieces. But um, I mean, a lot of the sideshow arts and skills come from like the mystics, the old ways, like medicine men and shaman, and uh, the people like they would lay on the bed of nails and the fakirs, they would like lay on the bed of nails to reach enlightenment, or they would swallow the sword to like align themselves and have everything focused, you know? So all these acts come from a deeper, more spiritual realm of existence, I feel. But, you know, when Sideshow in its heyday, when it was first created, uh, kind of exploited those things. And, and, then, and then turned them more into like a family friendly, presentation more than a um, than what it originally was I should say
Um, so we're here in Coney Island, which is kind of the one, one of the few places in maybe all of New York City that has still retained much of its original character. Um, I mean, you have the Thor Development Group buying up pl things around here, but like... Um, this guy on the stoop is wicked smart. Yeah, wicked smart. <laughs> we're talking about it's a tradition over 100 years old now, right? That you are carrying on faithfully. But uh, how do you make it, keep it part of the culture and not a novelty? What do you guys do here at the Freak Bar to keep burlesque and freak shows and all this great stuff actually part of the New York City's culture and not feel like just a novelty for tourists? Well, that's pretty hard because a lot of the people that come here today are like, Oh, are you guys like that TV show that was like American Horror Story? And, um, you know, it's kind of like a common misconception that happens with burlesque and sideshow. We try to like educate the people, but I've noticed that the audience has definitely like shown a decline in like, especially with like social media and, and, and phones and television and the whole instant gratification era of people. Like they don't really like, they're not amazed by the show the way it it used to amaze people once back in the day. And it's kind of sad, but we try to like give them something to be entertained by. And that, that's like our mission statement, you know, pure entertainment for your enjoyment. That's what we're here for. And that's what like burlesque also is. Just people that are passionate about it, working here, like Trick and I, you know, like this is our life. We are just trying to like share that with the world and keep it alive. You know, it's our lifestyle. It's not just like an act we put on. Even though we're performers, like this is our life. So, <laughs> and it's your family and yeah. it's, uh, well, you know, I love that because it's your family and it's everyone that you love. And it's also trying to get this in New York, you're, or any place you live, it's all about having family and a community. And I think that that's something that I've always sort of loved about the burlesque community is how close it is, but also how, um, how great they are with women and being open and different. And like, you can be any you can look this way you can be short you can be tall you can be big you can be small you can be anything and you're sexy as hell and i love that i think uh work, one of the one of the things about working with a live animal is that you just have to be present um you just have to be really present to what they're doing that's the hardest thing to do ever i think in life is just to like be i'm here right now this is where i'm not in the future i'm not in the past i'm here and this is fine and awesome especially because in uh, social media everybody's like text and they're you know reminiscing about something that they didn't really do but they took a picture of it and right now is the most important thing that's happening just right now yeah. so they don't bite missy uh, okay so unless you're a rat or a rabbit i am not right. so, so you, we're you okay wow so they constrict so they're only gonna like crush you to death so don't worry about <laughs> being bitten i mean that's fine Wait, they don't cr No, that's fine, right? That going yeah. uh, that going around your neck is. If okay. I start turning purple, be concerned. No, no, no. I'll just like cut it right off. No, I'm kidding. I won't. I will never hurt you. I would never hurt you. But it was only for you that I would do that. Thank you, I appreciate that. So in the middle of the season, the ballet master started. The ballet master outside started having. He started saying this new phrase that I really liked. It's like, not even on YouTube or in Venice Beach can they match the cavalcade of talent, thrills, and chills. That I wait you on the inside. Stuff you can't see on YouTube, right here. And even if you can, if you, you can look up sword swallowing, fire eating, whatever, you can see it on the internet, but it's not the same experience. You come here and you see it in person, and suddenly it's not, you're not, there's no screen between you and the stage, it's, it's this visceral experience where this guy or girl is swallowing a sword, someone's eating fire, someone's laying on a bed of nails, someone's hammering a nail into their nose, and you watch it on the internet, and it's not the same experience, for the sideshow anyway. But there's also something about it I can't explain. Like, you get off the train, and you forget about the stuff that's going on at home, you forget about, like, the nonsense on your phone, or, you know, the conversation you had with your parents this morning, or your spouse, or whatever, and suddenly you're in this place that's just like, come be a kid for a day, you know, and play around and have a good time and then leave and go back to that if you want. Yeah, please, hold in. I feel like maybe that's important now with social media where people really do. Um, there are real couples out there, people. Love still exists. Social media hasn't ruined everything, okay? 
Coney Island Circus Sideshow, seven days a week. Sorry. The last 10 in one Circus Sideshow this side of Mississippi, I guarantee. You won't miss a thing if you catch this show inside these wonderful walls, these colorful canvas. You'll see the last 10 in one Circus Sideshow this side of the country. That's right, you see it on TV, you see it on the internet. Here's a chance to see it live on the inside. But you can only do it if you buy a ticket. Because they're here, they're real, they're alive on the inside. All right, I gotta go back thank to the show. You, thank, you, no thank, you. thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to interview with me. Thank you for telling me your love story. Thank you for showing us around this kind of amazing, I mean, it's a history in New York, and I don't know if people really come out and get to see this amazing part of New York that's been here for, what, 30, 40, 50, 100, 200? I don't know anything. I mean, I'm re- The sideshow started back up in the early 80s, but the first sideshow in history was right here at Coney Island in about 1880? Probably earlier, maybe 1870. P.T. Barnum, all that stuff, it's over 100 years old. It's pretty cool. So, Missy, how you doing? Good. I thought we'd end our day in Coney Island with the most stereotypical way possible. Nathan Sat Dogs? Yeah, exactly. It's good. I'm going to eat these. I, I already started. I was dying. That's all right. I got a chili dog and a peppers and onions dog. Oh, wait. So, cause I, want, I hope to regret this later. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Oh, no, no, no. It's ready? so good, I'm choking. Mmm, ready? Okay. One, two, three, and uh, put it in your mouth. I'm... No, you're not choking because you can hear you say make sounds. Uh-huh. You ever perform the Heimlich? And anyone who can make noise from their gullet. Sure. Wow. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Um, thanks for that was that thanks for taking me out and I didn't take did you not out. expect that. I just met you here. Let's not lie about the origin of this meetup. We're doing a show. I mean, come on, it's planned. You always do this. I know. You always do this. You do this thing where you're like, the people are all dead in that photo. Yeah. I met you for the show because you asked me to do it last minute. You know, I feel like just because we set something up doesn't mean that it's not magical and beautiful. I feel like people always have to make something grandiose. You don't have to lie to make things magical. You know what I'm saying? Just like those freaks. We're actually patting their nails into their noses, that was right? Real, though. It's real and it's magical and it's beautiful. We don't need to dress it up. Okay. You know? That's what I'm saying. Good God, let me just show. eat my chili dog. I hate you so much. <laughs>